Welcome to Bang for Buck PC Gamer. Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. So it's 2016 and we have to say PC Gamer has come quite a long way and specs and hardware have risen as well when it comes to demand. So looking through some recent minimum specs of games like Grand Theft Auto 5, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt and The Rise of the Tomb Raider, I found that all of these games had one thing in common and that was they all required a minimum of a quad core CPU. So what I thought I would do is see how a dual core CPU would get on while trying to run these games. Now I do understand that uh, some games are a bit more CPU demanding than others. So what I did was chose these specific three games because they're quite uh, high on the CPU load just to hit home the point but um, using a dual core CPU can be a limiting factor in today's games. Fortunately for myself, I don't own a dual core CPU, but that won't stop me from conducting the test. So what I'm going to do is GIMP my Intel i7-5960X by disabling six of its eight cores and also removing the hyper-threading feature. So this is the BIOS of my MSI X99A Gaming 7 motherboard. Uh, the Intel i7-5960X will be overclocked to 4.4 GHz throughout the whole test. All I simply do is to GIMP the CPU is to go into my CPU features and disable hyper-threading. And as you can see there is 8 cores 0 to 7. All I do is simply disable 6 of these cores leaving cores 0 and 1 enabled which effectively makes this a dual core CPU. So now onto Grand Theft Auto 5. Looking at the settings that I use for this game, I use a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Um, Anti-aliasing method is MSAA which I used four times. Everything else is at there is maximum settings. Reflection MSAA is at eight times. And Yes, everything else is maxed out. For the advanced graphic settings, again, everything else is uh, maxed out. So looking at Grand Theft Auto 5 now, um, things have started off reasonably well. Game is running, but it is um, hiccuping quite a lot. It's definitely not running as intended. And you can see their textures are not streaming in fast enough so um, the popping effect is um, just unacceptable. Um, out of all the games I've tested, this game by far definitely can't be run on a dual core CPU despite being overclocked at 4.4 GHz um, that doesn't help in any way. This game clearly is very very CPU dependent and um, really really needs more than two threads or two cores to get the job done so um, for this game to be marketed with um, a quad core in mind as a minimum specification is highly justified now let's have a look at the game when it's run with eight cores and just seeing just how the performance is in comparison to trying to run this game with two cores So the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, the in-game settings I used were a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and everything is actually maxed out throughout the whole game. Hairworks is on with a maximum um, anti-aliasing level of 8 as well plus um, the only thing I disabled was motion blur as I don't think it adds anything to the game and sharpening is at low. 
but it's just a filter and doesn't affect performance. I think when you have it at high, it makes the game look a bit too cartoonish for my liking. Everything else is uh, maxed out. So far, um, performance is not too bad and the game is running, especially in one of the highest um, CPU loaded areas in the game, which is an overgrad city. Um, the GTX 1080 definitely not getting utilized to its potential. GP load as low as 34% there and a massive CPU bottleneck holding back performance by quite um, a great deal. But um, the game still works, which is um, definitely a good thing. But this is definitely far from um, what you'd expect with such a powerful GPU as the GTX 1080. As you can see, cores, both cores at 100% constantly throughout the whole test. Which just goes to show you that um, this game is pretty um, worthy of being uh, marketed as having um, a quad core CPU as a minimum requirement. So again, what I'll do is uh, run the game with um, eight cores, um, compare it to two and you can see what kind of performance you'd get in an ideal situation. So the Rise of the Tomb Raider settings I used were a resolution of 1920 by 1080 anti-aliasing method I used was SMAA in the graphics settings everything's maxed out with the exception of ambient occlusion the method I used was HBAO plus the maximum is BXAO but in my opinion it's just a waste of uh, performance so far things are looking good two cores have maxed out at 100% each but um, performance is still decent and this is one of the reasons why when building a gaming PC everyone will recommend that you put most of your money into the GPU and um, it will pretty much take the most brunt and give you the most performance when it comes to gaming but it's not a def it's definitely not a perfect scenario as you can see GTX 1080 um, is slightly bottlenecked and uh, performance is plummeted quite heavily in this section of the game um, GPU loads around 50 to 47 percent and because the two cores are just so busy with the, the game's um, load it's just not getting the information fast enough to the GPU and as a result performance has um, plummeted but I have to say the game is playable with two cores despite being advertised as a minimum of four cores um, so what I'm going to do now is run the game side by side um, with four cores or more so you can see the, the performance difference if you were to use something a bit more beefier.
my comparison. What I've learned from these short tests is that despite what the developers recommend as minimum requirements, um, a dual core CPU will enable you to be able to at least run uh, most games, but you will suffer some um, obviously side effects like for example Grand Theft Auto 5 the game will start but it suffers from hicks and hiccups and complete stuttering that makes it virtually unplayable and to add to that as well you, you have to suffer some extraordinarily long loading times despite having the game on a solid state hard drive so um, other games like uh, Tomb Raider um, you can see you can get away with running two cores um, but you can expect some very very um, low frames per second in some areas and the last but not least you can also expect some very heavy bottlenecking if you've got yourself a powerful GPU so when you're shopping for your new graphics card and you're thinking about saving a bit of money by going with a low-end CPU just bear that in mind that um, the trade-off could be um, to <laughs> not to your benefit so try to remember to keep balance when building your system and um, I would still recommend people moving over to a minimum of a quad core CPU just to enable yourself to play all games at a decent um, level of performance anyway guys that's pretty much it for me hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching